capability. I'd like to Protection of wildlife, you know, in the in in, in Gonare Show and the Wange Game Park, we have ten families of elephants in 
age of Bonara Shaw and Wangeke monitor when the is near them, watch a wall, those have you know videos that capture that in case we miss out because for example we are in the session of this nation. You know, it's just run back and what is happening. The minister in nature are the first indicator of death in the past. So we also tag families of our church. So that they tell us immediately where death is okay in the campus. We become very interested. In some cases, we find it's a leopard that has killed the dog. It's a lie that is killed, you know, and so forth. But of course, our mandate hasn't been extended to have uh, you know, all those other animals. Hey, it's fair again, you know, to the world. But certainly for elephants, we find what is happening right across, you know. Is too important, you know, from here. People down there. And right from here, Various organizations in the country have been given the software. I can tell you that the hurricane is arriving very fast, take you know, people out of you know, the following areas and so forth. And so the point I'm trying to emphasize on the minister is that you not to use that of uh, 20 years ago, University of Zimbabwe, which is uh, development oriented, which is interested in empowering the country to take charge of um, its own you know, activities and resources. And we would like to relevant departments in your ministry so that together we can make better and enjoyable to all of us. And so all I'm saying, we're here, we have the expertise, and the readiness to work you know, with you, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
I therefore use all of your partner and come up with the lasting on this matter. Gentlemen, the government of Zimbabwe puts as a priority the need to manage our water resources in order to attain Africa's 2030 agenda for development. In the last few decades, Africa has been experiencing recurrent droughts and floods, which have negatively impacted activity. It is a fact, ladies and gentlemen, that with climate change upon us, it is becoming more evident that the, the intensity and extension of hydrological extremes, which are floods and droughts, are this therefore calls for new approaches to water resource management. <coughs> Indeed, SDG number 13 on climate change is critical to the achievement of all SDGs. 
We had to atone by taking small towns. We ended up putting our pipe water to avert water related disasters. As if this ladies and gentlemen, this is a rainful season. We experienced a completely different scenario with the La Nina effect affecting our infrastructure, such as bridges being washed away. Bridges. Our government is grappling to mobilize resources to rehabilitate more than 170 um tried to declare was contaminated. The losses recorded during the flooding, this climate change variability has presented a paradigm shift in our water resources planning management programs. My ministry has therefore introduced the water harvesting program through the construction of wells in all the 10 provinces of the country with specific emphasis in dry areas such as Matebelene South and North, Mashingo and the South Western parts of the country. Ladies and gentlemen, apart from harnessing water from the floods, one source of water that we critically need to focus on is if we are to mitigate against the effects of climate and climate change. In urban and rural Zimbabwe, wastewater management receives less attention, and yet we can promote the recycling and reuse of grey water from our kitchens and bathrooms and black water from sewage effluent without causing any harm to public health and the environment. This, ladies and gentlemen, can only be achieved if we sensitize our people to use to use to the use of water as a source the UN has carefully said for this year's commemoration untapped resource. I'm told that today our topic of this public lecture the doors through water management in the order thirty agenda for sustainable development that the lecture will challenge us all in the field of water resources management to think outside the book in the face of climate change and come up with innovative solutions to overcome today's challenges. Thank you.
that we do not have the capacity ourselves seriously uh, for any disasters. More so now, I, I understand that uh, the University of Zimbabwe has already done research and this which is information to look and I you that we are our heads together and ensure we come up with an M a, not but in an agreement, to utilize that is available. I want to thank you very much again for the wildlife tracking system. Uh, you availed to us, but to say that, to safeguard this jealousy, not be those watchers who would use wrongly to further their approaching activities. This is a Today is not a day of speech, but at least in language. My colleague, uh, Professor Lengru, the other colleagues from the uh, uh, agencies, with particular reference presented here, respected, invited, and ladies and gentlemen. It is our great uh, uh, speak on behalf of uh, Professor, Professor who unfortunately was not able to be here with us this, this afternoon because of our engagement. Thank you. 
strong position on the sustainable development board, which we uh, asked you this for, she was at that meeting, which fed the number of development board. She was the minister of which was in that. And we probably through again time doing the same, you know, similar thing but in the area. Uh, which key uh, to the development of a nation, but just a very, very short one. When we talk about water from UNESCO, people think mandating water. But I'll show you very very UNESCO, as you can see here, uh, has five mandates. Science, social sciences, and uh, communication and information. But as, as part of the science sector, uh, we run about five different programs. One of the key programs that we have is in water. And the division of water, we have the international association. The program which are part of it, and we're happy to announce that this is a very speak. We also have the assessment, and then we also have UNESCO IHG, which is the Institute of Water Education. And a lot of you have been part of this institution, and the last but not the least is this category two centers chairs. These are the focus of UNESCO uh, in, in the systematic uh, water related disaster hydrological changes. And in the program that um, he has cooperated with UNESCO in the recent one that I've just referred to is uh, in the disaster risk reduction. Look at our drought. Monitoring tool we do it with uh, water. Now. The second water uh, in charging the environment, as the minister mentioned, and my colleague also talked about it. The thing is, we are addressing water security and water quality. Uh, the fourth one is uh, human settlements in water. Last one is more of the sustainable So in the region. <laughs> Based 
on that. And we also show you why this is very important. Something, you know, we think we have to bring this up. I'm sure many of you are aware of the Sustainable Development Goal. There are 17 goals. Is that it is the unfinished business of the MDGs. The MDGs are seven, uh, which, you know, here, all the way up to here. And you can see that these are unfinished business. And what we are dealing with now is the goal six. But you cannot do goal six with all the others. And in fact, uh, Professor Colin Brook will give you details about, about that very shortly. And that minister also mentioned climate, which is very important. And Vice Chancellor. And you know, 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 you you know, you know, you and Madam Minister, what you said, what we need is, we need innovative, new innovative ways of managing water. And in the end, we also need new innovative ways of making most of, uh, making sure that the sustainable development goals are achieved. And recently, in collaboration with the government of Zimbabwe, and we say, I developed proposed application with uh, with that with Sadek Win, meaning Sadek Water uh, Initiative or Innovative <coughs> Water Initiative. Pillars. Pillar uh, is you know policies. We need the right policies and planning, and I'm sure Professor uh, will you know. Please give us some examples as to how you know good policies and uh, you know dynamic and relevant policies can affect water security. The second pillar is a warning and hazard mapping. Again, it's very key. We need to have pilots, uh, we need to develop live, uh, and, and Vice Chancellor told us that we're solving, you know, uh, we want to solve problems, practical problems, using science and engineering. This is the area that we really need the universities to bring you know knowledge to the community but we have to do it through what we call uh, you know alliances learning alliances and the last pillar you know, institutional and human capacity building uh, zimbabwe is uh, in the region you know, uh, zimbabwe can host of human capital compared to other countries uh, when you know most of the meetings we go to, even in South Africa, the water experts are from Zimbabwe. Uh, yes, but we need to develop more of them. And we would like to use the University of Zimbabwe as the center of excellence. And uh, as Chancellor, this would be an opportunity for the University of Zimbabwe to, to propose. A center of excellence security because we have all it takes you know, to do that. And we look forward to that. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank all of you for this short presentation. Thank you. Amen. Uh -huh.
Honorable Minister, Madame uh, Fara Mucilinga, Vice Chancellor Professor Levi Nigara, Director of Ceremonies, Dr. Mitzi, uh, Dr. Peggy Ubeng, Chief Civil Engineer, Dr. Sumat Kraila, for the local and respect of the brother, government officials. Representatives from the private sector, fellow professors, ladies and gentlemen, students, not to forget the students, of course, and uh, lecturer, and uh, to give this uh, public speech, a public lecture. I, I cannot see it here, so I sometimes have to, to turn around now. Um, I was asked to come up with an appealing title that it is also uh, getting the, the interest of, of the, the younger generation. And, Resources, 
to do that, we, have, we do publications, we do communications, uh, we have premises and an administration and management that works. Three main activities, and the first pillar of our activities is the World Water Development Report. I will speak about that. And the synthesis report on SDG 6, I will also speak about that. Furthermore, we do a lot of advocacy and outreach. We publish nice reports. I, 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 I had a pleasure this morning to visit the minister in our office and I handed over to her and I, very carefully, but, but not all ministers are so committed, you know, and, and, and you know, sometimes just writing reports that's change the world. So it's very important to communicate about it. To work towards reaching out with your messages. And that's what we do in this field, and I will explain. Uh, what we're doing there, and we also do is apply research projects. A few examples for the World Water Development Report. It's up since 2003, it was every two years, the first year, and now we do annually. Always on a different topic. 2014, it was a set of the the world, the 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 Coordinating my children, I found it very really difficult. The 31 UN agencies is very challenging to make them agree every year to together write one report. Um, quickly on, on science policy interface, so we, we work in high level policy dialogues with ministers, UNESCO, and, and other colleagues. We work with movies, we find out how many of the people who are in the world are in the world. We have a few slides in the world, and we have a few slides in the world. One of the movies we presented was a training we did week last year in Italy with different participants from different African countries. In the field of flight, uh, projects that we are doing, we, we work a lot in the field of water and gender. And uh, this is a series of publications in there that they thought a to measure the different women in which which are distinct, you know, up from the household level up to the high level policy making. And, uh, and, and to measure that, to understand that, and to also help developing good policies to maybe overcome the gender gap if it is existing, and in many countries it is existing. And uh, therefore, this methodology there is another field that we would like to engage with. So this is roughly what we're doing, but let me now move on to the, to the wastewater report, it's called wastewater the untapped resource, and I'm really my apologies, we thought very carefully about the colors we're doing, and uh, it's really pretty that uh, it looks very different from this. This we the quality aspect. quality aspect. So, but we have to buy for another one. The state of the world. Globally, the demand for water has been increasing and it's likely to continue to increase. Globally, every year, but we increase our demand for 1%. But if the water resources are finite, and every year you add another percentage which you will do of the system, you can imagine this is not sustainable. In many parts of the world, uh, we already exceeded the carrying capacity of the system. And this is because So the, the drinking water is not the problem. It's maybe a problem of quality and come to that, but in terms of quantity, that's not necessarily a problem. The big demand, big withdrawals are are in the other sectors. And also look if you look at the future, there's different scenarios. And uh, I, I don't show you the numbers of many different scenarios, but 
it's largely increased in electricity, water demand for electricity, cooling, as well as for industry, which will increase the water, the water demand. I don't know the exact numbers for Harara, but also Harara has been growing uh, rapidly over the last years and likely will continue to grow. So this concentration of people in the urban centers always needs for wastewater, for hygiene, etc., wastewater management, is really putting a challenge. Yeah. And you see the increase is possible almost everywhere except in rural areas in Eastern Asia. There only the, the, the urban areas are increasing. So we will have another 2.3 billion people living in urban areas. So 2 billion people will live on this planet, and uh, more than 60% likely in urban areas. And the biggest increase in urbanization is not in the developed world. There are, we are already in very urbanized systems. Africa is probably 40% in urban areas. But here is the big urbanization is mainly in the developing countries. And you see the distribution in another. So, I'm from this 6.3 million people which we had. Water scarcity. This is a map, um, the dark of the red. I'm really I'm so sorry about the quality of the. The displaying here, but the darker the red, the larger the scarcity. I think you know the areas where the water scarcity is already very strong, like here the the, uh, um, the northern hemisphere, the Sahara Desert, Middle East, South Central Asia, Eastern Asia, etc., Australia, but also uh, uh, this part of Southern Africa certainly is, is exposed to strong water scarcity. 500 million people live in an area where the current water demand exceeds the available water resources by factor two. Yeah, so it's completely unsustainable. If you two times uh, your demand is 100% higher than the actual sustainable uh, renewable water resources locally, then you always have to do some sort of interface and transfer, some sort of generating new water resources to be able to deal with that. And that's not sustainable. Or very expensive. It's increasing the water demand to the population growth, but also to the um, change of, of uh, the diet. Other areas, urbanization, I was speaking about that, and uh, energy production very significantly will also draw the water resources as well as the, the impact for the ecosystems. The environmental needs are also there. And these are all interconnected uh, drivers. So it's climate change interconnected with all the other changes, and they all change at the same time. So it's very difficult to single out only one driver as the main, as the main issue. Those are really the combination of all of them and how they impact our, our water system. And it, uh, I said already, the, the, the stars in this situation is also a lot of very much increasing. Because we take all of the Lectures and uh, we also speak at a different parliament. So, for instance, last year in September, I was presenting at the European Parliament, giving a lecture about water and jobs and how also investments in water can help generate a parliament. That's true for the European Union and also true for the developing world. Getting at the UN 
or 30 April in the International New York Times to get this article. It was about the drought in the Sabesi. And uh, no news here, you, you know exactly this drought, I think it's only a bit more than a year ago. And there was the headline used of the International New York Times was on the, uh, the very low water levels. The minister, she told me, the levels was over close down to zero uh, because of the, the uh, strong El Nino signal that you had experiencing here. And that only meant going to in, in Kariba Dam, little water going through the turbines of Kariba Dam, the depth of power cuts, very significant power cuts. Uh, the, the dean, uh, Dr. McRae, also explained to me yesterday and, and how, how severe the situation was two consecutive years
was the solution to the migration is job jobs and local countries. Yeah. If somebody has a decent job, why should he or he or she left the village? Why should he or live trying to go to Europe to, to other places, you know? Having a decent job is just uh, uh, it's human right actually, but, but it's it's not practical. So we need to generate employment. Sustainable. And my story about the jobs report a problem. There was a short excursion into to, to some from last year report, but I just thought it's very interesting and uh, just want, want to share these, these results with you. We yeah, have globally more waste water than ever. We, we pull more from the system, we generate more and more waste water, and we, the pollution loads are globally increasing. You see that the degradation of the water quality of the map of the darker the red color, the more severe the pollution. This is now for pathogens, but you find similar maps in the report for many other programs. Of the what we call into agriculture. The 32 is 70 percent, but only 38 percent is actually consumed. 32% is agricultural drainage, so it's kind of water that we take from the system, but from the, from the agricultural fields go back to the environment. For municipal water, we take some 11% roughly, and uh, only 3% are actually consumed. The other goes back. And if we go to the it's less than 10 percent. Often, on average, we say 88 percent of the water is treated. percent are not treated. If you have to leave earlier, so the main message is this is a pity because this 90% of this wastewater we just lose. This is a resource, this is something we should utilize and, uh, and, and just to discharge it. It's a burden just to discharge it and, and to not use it is, is really a pity. And that's what I explained in the remaining 15 to 20 minutes. 80% of the global water resources is actually not. Giving exact numbers is very difficult because data is a big, big issue. Many countries but also the health of the people. Every year, so plus 800 because of pure hygiene. Uh, and, and poor wastewater treatment. It, it makes it immediately to the, to the world news, isn't it? Or an airplane uh, crash, and, and that's terrible, and, and two, three hundred people were dying. And it is terrible. But mind you, every single day, 360,000. We talk about proper water, proper water supply, and hygiene, and, and wastewater. Big, three big airplanes full of children with less than five years old. These are the facts. You can find the detailed numbers in calculation order in our report, which will be on the web uh, in two days from now. Then we come to the sustainable development goals, and the target is to significantly 
can be increased in waste water, substantially increased in size and sustainable over the previous. SP number six is speed up timing. Um, and when we talk about sustainable development, this is much more than only looking at water sanitation, of course, this aspect to human health and well being, but all the ecosystems, pollution recycling, industry, linked to sustainable management of water. SDG uh, 6, it has uh, eight different goals. Uh, the target is called, and you see it's related to drinking for unfinished business, what we do nowadays, and it's true. Yeah. The SDG was really looking at this should be a well, that this should be a toilet, and that uh, fit into really focusing on water supply and sanitation. But the SDGs are really much wider, that looks at the whole water cycle dynamics with all its components, including ecosystems, floods and droughts, etc. Yeah. So it's, it's a much wider, much wider agenda. I will speed up. And my, my point is here that the SDG 6 is directly linked to many others. There's a very strong link between SDG 6 and on food security. The one on gender equality, clean energy, growth and um, uh, employment. Climate, uh, climate, uh, climate change, etc., etc. So there's very strong links, and also there's a lot of indirect links between poverty, to the so-called high-level political world. These are huge challenges. And you see here the percent 
percentage of access to improved education and the red of the color the lower the access and Good. There's a lot of material. I, I see it in uh, four o'clock, so, but I, I have one more the, uh, main uh, set of findings about the report, which I would like to share with you. And I would like now to move on in uh, looking at the uh, meeting the challenge of improving wastewater management. In this challenge, the first is we have to reduce the amount of wastewater. Yeah? Second, we have to remove the bad things out of the wastewater through collection and treatment. The fourth is we have to reuse it again and again as much as we can. And finally, we cover interesting byproducts. And that puts wastewater as a very, very essential for the circular economy. And my main message is um, move and we uh, reuse and recover. We have to stop seeing wastewater as a nuisance, as, as a burden, something we want to discharge and get rid of. No, we have to really see it as a, as a resource. And how do we do this? And and most important is really reducing the wastewater. Have in the fish as much as we can. That means in agriculture to really reduce the most efficient. In the industry, there's many, many developments and going where they want to develop so called zero liquid discharge industry. That means minimizing wastewater out of the industry and then we use and use again and again. It needs some investment, that's the way to go. Yeah. Water quantity. It's also about uh, reducing uh, the use of substances that shouldn't be in the waste. Water, you know, uh, pharmaceutical parts, the microplastics. Is This morning is if you NESCO office in, in its toothpaste all well, there uh, into the food chain, into the fish, and having all sorts of side effects that we don't want to have. But don't use it, you know. Don't put these microplastics in the tooth, the uh, in the cosmetics. In the, uh, in the clothes, also to make it more shiny. It just just bans this stuff, you know? and that's actually done in, in Canada and in some other other countries. And hopefully, Europe will also follow. Policy here in Zimbabwe. So, <clears throat> preventing the problem is always cheaper than trying to repair the problem later. To so use and prevent waste wastewater uh, generation as much as we can, and avoid avoid these substances. Is if we have wastewater, we should not just discharge it, we should collect it and, and treat it either with natural systems or with treatment plants. Yeah. It's not that the treatment plants better sing, really, it's not a local company. The power of, of a biological treatment by nature. And that's maybe also something I really I put some emphasis on this because I think in the Zimbabwean context. Um, you have wetlands which maybe can be used for wastewater treatment as well. The impact on the, on the uh, environmental integrity of the wetlands so it has to be has to be done carefully, not just discharging. But but we should not underestimate manage uh, constructed wetlands in their power for wastewater treatment. And it can be much cheaper plastic if you get a Said sixty-five percent of the, the world population will live in urban, uh, in urban areas, and, and that has huge implications for wastewater management. Globally, it has been estimated that more than hundred billion are needed to be invested every year in wastewater treatment. Well, but not only, but also there's a lot of investments needed in uh, so-called global north. 
and it's an infrastructure utility. So, uh, but just some examples. For instance, in Lagos in Nigeria, soon there will be 23 billion people living there. 5% of the wastewater is treated. There's huge implications for the, for the people living there, particularly people who are exposed to water, particularly for people living in, in slums, uh, health implications, uh, and implications for the ecosystem. The size of the United Kingdom, yeah, of marine ecosystems that are, uh, the of the United Kingdom, really, marine ecosystems that are very severely impacted. <coughs> And no central sewage system there, less than 2% of the people are served as a treatment system. That, that needs, obviously needs to change. So solutions here. And I want to share some other African examples. Kampala, for instance, uh, uh, near uh, wetland uh, uh, to the shores of uh, Lake Victoria, Kivubu wetland, it receives wastewater from some 100,000 households. Big wastewater treatment plant. With, with the impact that it's purifying the water and that provides services, services that we're estimating to roughly billion 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 US dollars here. And additional support. So people make a living from that wastewater coming into there uh, uh, and um, using this ecosystem service. <coughs> Obviously, again, it should be. The system integrity. This has to, should be done in a managed way. I'm just su suggesting that, that, that by utilizing natural potential of wetlands in this case, you can really generate a lot of services. And that needs much less investment, much much less operation and maintenance cost than, than a, a, a high tech wastewater treatment plant. Maybe some donors prefer high tech wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> Um, or Accra, another example, I put this in for, for Peggy, you know, she's a, my, my a dear colleague from, from UNESCO, from her home country. Um, also there, the wastewater treatment plant, plants are barely functional. Uh, urban agriculture, and there's a project which was studied by the International Water Management Institute in collaboration with Agra uh, uh, Academia. Uh, it, it creates an annual market value of some 40 million. Uh, um, benefits, employment opportunities for 200,000 slumlords, <coughs> yeah? and, and quite quite some nice annual income, you know, for, for these farmers. So there, there is through wastewater management, through very urban agriculture, doing that properly, there's really opportunities uh, for for yeah, based on this money, you want to get rid of it. Can also be solved in different things. Maybe skip that. So now the question: the centralized wastewater treatment plan can be the right thing. It depends on the local circumstances, depends on the, uh, and the, the capacity, and so on. But it's not necessarily better. Also in Indiana, in, uh, in, in Washington, Indiana, and in, in, uh, in the U.S. Uh, they, they had to uh, invest heavily in, in wastewater treatment, and they were evaluating: is it a centralized big plant or a more constructed plant? So centralized big plants a lot of water, money goes into the collection of the pipes. On in one central plant, they were in clean. Um, Constructed wetlands, and that also cleaned the water, and it was they saved 20, uh, 26 million of investment, and every year more than a million in lower operational maintenance costs and ecological benefits. So you can really see the big solution is not necessarily the better one, also in the in this case, in the United States. Another example for decentralized wastewater treatment just from these neighborhoods just for the treatment that right? Centralized better is the high tech or the low tech better. I think often the low tech can be the appropriate one, certainly in a developing country context. And if we want to achieve the SDGs, we cannot go for the expensive high tech solution. We have to utilize 
low tech, also <coughs> very efficient technology, which is much lower odds in operational maintenance. It's not just putting a wetland somewhere and don't, don't care, you know, it, it needs some operational costs and needs some local capacity as well. But there's still a key role for the universities to graduate smart, smart uh, engineers and, uh, and scientists do it. If you want to achieve the sustainable development goals, this is one of the way forward. The reusing part. Um, we can reuse water for, for many things, for irrigation, agriculture, recharge, goods for industrial processes, heating, uh, uh, heating and cooling, and uh, the use of water. Let's not think we choose the way. Why should we, uh, which process that you can drink it? It's, it's too expensive. So therefore, we very much believe that we should treat for purpose and be very clear what we want to do with this wastewater treatment. When it comes to um, uh, wastewater treatment, I, I, I like to share an example just from the region because I think the whole world can, can learn from this region for many reasons. There's this song that the summer of 69, you know, that's from Brian Adams, maybe, maybe you like that music. But, uh, in the summer of 69, uh, it, many things happen. Maybe, maybe you met your, 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 your girlfriend at the time, or probably his mother was a very busy summer. He at the time in 69, he was very busy at the time. But much before 69, in Bitok, in Namibia, they started this portable reef. Wastewater, or I think 50 years ago, uh, in, 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 uh, in Portugal, and, and you reusing water for Portugal that we use now. So it's almost 50 years we have this experience from the region in, in uh, wastewater treatment, also to utilize the natural purification capacity. Which of them, and I'm calling, but they were they are leading in the field. And maybe on San Diego and the US is another one. But uh, it's actually in, 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 uh, in Southern Africa where, where we uh, have the most experience. Um, furthermore, there is many different interesting byproducts. And I slowly come to the end. There's many, many interesting byproducts. It's not only the water. The water content in the in use, we're using the water, the, the, the waste water, the gray water in decent households can help to offset water scarcity, which we experience because of demand and climate change. And <coughs> There's also um, nutrients in that water, you know, uh, potassium, nitrogen, etc. These are very valuable for uh, as fertilizer. Furthermore, there's organic material which we can use for um, energy production and help to offset the investments that are needed for better wastewater. <laughs> because that has to energy, of course, wastewater treatment needs energy, but there's many plants uh, which are energy positive. That means through using the sludge that, that we generate in wastewater treatment, they use it for energy, not only to su support the, the cleaning and popping processes in the plant itself, it also in exporting energy, the energy positive wastewater treatment plants we have as well. And, and, and we, we really have to have recovery in the new future as well. Uh, central, there's a bit too much text for the time of the day, but that's a very uh, central component of the circular economy. Probably you are aware of that, uh, that concept where we uh, have to have economic growth, but in a sustainable way, that means we need to balance the economic growth with a sustainable use of resources. That means the loss is going to actually such a use and recycling that we try to minimize the waste source needs and waste production. And water and wastewater is absolutely key to that. Um, why, is, why is that like this? If you look at the different uh, natural resources, oil, gas, coal, etc., this is the, the uh, availability of these resources now, and uh, just to illustrate that, this is a picture of my 
or younger than he's nine years old now. This is this is he now. But soon he will have my age. Not only my age, not an old man, but only my age. And then he will have he will live in a in a, in a world probably without oil. But Antonio is set for a sink silver bowl if this continues like this. So he will live in a completely different world if we continue like this. So we have to enter in a circular economy way. He cannot, you know, and he's only in my age, so that's not the problem. So we have to really change the way we use our natural resources. And one example is phosphorus. Um, a lot of the phosphorus that we are discharging as in our human waste. 66% in our urine. Yeah. And this urine is a resource. Phosphorus is 85%. One region of the world, Morocco and Western Sahara, maybe not the most stable uh, um, always. And it, you know, we, we really depend on mineral phosphorus from this region of the world, so that, that is not sustainable. Probably in some uh, 50 to 100 years, we're running out of phosphorus as we continue like this. But globally, through the recycling, we can recycle also from the human waste, we can really offset uh, this demand. I, I skip it here, go a bit fast to the end. So it's a little loss. I come to the last part of my. And the question is, how do we get it? Yeah, so I was uh, a number of, of challenges, but uh, what are the, the necessary steps that we need to take uh, to, to enter into a circular economy where water and waste water is absolutely key? And the first thing is a professor I probably said the most important is research. The vice chancellor, my, my degree must be that research is very important, and all the Discussions I, I, I raised today on, on whether we use recycling. More smart brains are sitting probably more in the, the, in the, the back of this lecture hall. We, we need you. We need more information, more research. It's absolutely needed. But it's often not the uh, mutation that, that, that can be reversed. Often are the so called soft science and the legal. And other obstacles that, that really hinder us for the bad response. It's not my last thought. Maybe, maybe a law, uh, the minister, maybe you should consider bringing up that, that you make a law of some reuse. That the big farmers are just forced to also reuse this resource. Maybe we should think of, of any, in many countries where the water is not properly priced, it's too cheap. People just take it and waste it. They just pump it out of the system and, and discharge it to the environment. But a better pricing, it, it, yes, farmers have to pay that, but they need to put that into the product, so we all have to pay it. But it's better pricing that facilitates maybe more economic use of it. It also helps to generate income for, for setting off the negative aspects. So that's, that's the first message. Second. <laughs> It's about new revenue streams. It's, it's about the investments needed for better water management. Can we offset through appropriate financing mechanisms and by realizing to because 80% of the world says, of the country said, no, we don't have enough money for all these nice things for what, what the World Water Assessment Program is preaching. It's, it's, it's a lack of money. But I argue it's going back to society because people are not, they, they are less ill, they can work, they can more efficiency, etc. etc. So it's really came up. Number three, it's we have to minimize the risk. If we use untreated wastewater for agriculture and people are exposed directly to the pathogens, this is of course not okay. You know, this is even very unhealthy. They are can get sick and they can be diagnosed. However, it's a multi-barrier 
copper dust really is that with long the whole chain from the using of the wastewater up to, uh, to eating the food that really minimize the risk of pathogens. And it is possible, of course, it needs a proper management and it needs also uh, <coughs> education and awareness raising. A young lady from um, uh, India, southern India, uh, often it's, it's, the, it's the females, the or less strong groups of society who potentially are directly exposed to this. So therefore, we need proper schemes to manage that, that properly, to minimize the risk. And it's often the special women and children that are uh, exposed and other vulnerable groups who are exposed to, to these threats. Capacity building research. Yes, research is needed. New fuel cells are needed. We should really use we should make the waste water treatment plants powerhouses. You know, we should be using the production Therefore, okay, rules are needed. Uh, but it, it's not only that, we have a lot of knowledge already now, it's also applying, but also a lot of capacity buildings need. Many people don't even know that this wastewater is such a resource. Uh, they just see it as a nuisance, as a, as a, as a burden. And, and just to discharge it to the environment. It's, it's too little known what kind of value we have in our hands. And uh, that needs also, if we want to reuse the water, I'm coming really to the end now, if you want to reuse the water, it needs capacity building with awareness. It was a, a, a complete failure of a reuse project. <laughs> They did, they used the waste for, for aquaculture, for fish, for the most in the wastewater. <laughs> if you say new water, then oh, it's new water, you know, that's what I drink, and they did. As much as they invested into the engineering of the treatment plan, etc., they invested into uh, a, a demonstration center, uh, a public uh, awareness uh, demo center, made the minister drinking the wastewater in public TV, and uh, really the demonstrating. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, the, all the costs for management are outweighed by the benefits from that. Benefits for the human health, benefits for society, for the social and for environmental sustainability. So don't tell the government the minister, but, but also the, the government. You have to understand that these are very good investments. I, from the last year, computer stick was circulated, and all of my children are very happy to share my PowerPoint and everything, and I'm very much looking forward to this discussion. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Yulin uh, Brook. Um, that waste is not um, in, the, in the interest of time. Um, we are going to have a discussion for the next 10 or 15 minutes. Um, you can pose questions, comments, as with the mic. Mr. Morgan. Uh, thank you. I'm Mulan Morgan from the Institute of Water and Sanitation Development. Uh, from the lecture, I think we can see that whilst we are able to use we need to be able to understand what it means and also to be able to manage I just want to give a little bit of information that it will help us also we wastewater is not being tested. In fact, there's a general absence of water quality management systems, but going further to the absence of whether it's wastewater or even clean water as well, which means in the majority, but well, at sample of 10 uh, districts in the country, is probably very indicative of what is happening elsewhere in, in, in the country. When people are being supplied with that is not being that is not being tested, and also water is being discharged as well. We then follow that with a meeting with uh, the CEOs of the Lord District Councils, with uh, SINOA, with the Ministry of Health, and the chairpersons of uh, the District Councils. And uh, one of the comments they gave was that they are not aware of what they are holding in terms of testing, water quality testing and water quality management. So what that implies is uh, there is need to get to a point where we create our institution to start uh, our drink water supplies and our wastewater supplies. But I think it's, uh, it's just a scenario that I wanted to present now that we have uh, the authorities that are responsible in the room. That uh, as we talk about these solutions, this is the existing situation that we have that we need to manage and that we need to. To, to develop capacities for so that the country can be able to, to, to implement some of these things. So I took a little bit long, but uh, I normally do that sometimes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. By the way, to uh, raise any point, please, uh, that was Mr. M. Renga, the executive director of the Institute of Water and Sanitation. Prof, would you like to comment? 
Well, I, I fully agree with you, sir. You know, it's, it's uh, monitoring testing to enable the technology across all labs. You know, really, at all levels, as well as these. So, I talk about the management. Better monitoring is, is a very central part of it. It's not, not only about building things and pipes and these things, no, really managing it properly requires more data, better monitoring to enable, to ensure safe reuse and recycling and uh, use of it. And I, I fully agree with this comment. Thank you very much. Um, another comment? Over there. Dr. Wingate. <laughs> Um, my name is Rubiri. I am the now for senior food farms. I really thank the professor for it has given me all in the work that I've been doing here. But I always wonder why well done. African Development Bank finance the waste
that want to connect. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's have uh, two more comments and then we close the session. All right. Thank you. When comment on the farming or <laughs> thank you. I'm Manya Naive from the Zimbabwe University. Yes. Investing into all of these infrastructures, we are driving the so called integrated water resources management. But it appears we are not focused on the local issues, small institutions that we have established to make not as the water resource money. Are those institutions working? Are we not operating in a world where, at the local level, we have some individuals with very much information that educate the local person at the local farm? Are they local water users, educators, what they are wearing here? Before we even go to those complex waste water treatment plants, there is complex dams with every infrastructure. <laughs> And how do we make those policies translate into a valuable working system that benefits local levels at the global and working That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your for your for your uh, opinion on that. In fact, uh, they say that uh, um, uh, simplicity is the ultimate complexity. <laughs> so simple. Okay. Can I have the last comment, please? Thank you. My name is Sharon. I work with young farmers. Um, I really like um, the presentation. But my question was, how are we going to make the new people get this information? How is it and delivered to the people, the stakeholders in this platform? Thank you. Thank you so much. I was probably a Yet a very, very central, important question. I, I wish I had the satisfying, perfect answer to it, but uh, you know, I, I work at this other level. I interact a lot with, with governments and, and, and try to share this information. And I always offer, or really, honestly, offer the, the collaboration and, and reaching out further because I believe yet another report is, you know, it's nice. Many of these messages are here that maybe some people. Experts in waste water management in the room, they said, Well, part of it I heard before and I read a paper at the same It's not totally easy. But I think our, what we do, we, we assemble that, we bring that together and think about what can be advised policymakers. So, so, I mean, so that, that's my job. But then to take from there, to translate that into national policies, to reach out to, to, to the other level. Man of the streets, there's a role for the university to play, there's a role for public awareness, maybe NGOs, maybe uh, government and schools, and there's a concerted effort of many players into a better future. But, but I think our work can help us, and we are happy to support that. And I, I wish very much that we maybe establish an opportunity in the coming years to be published every year such a report. There always are different topics. The, that we establish a mechanism where we could work together with the government of Zimbabwe, maybe, and, and making some steps to, along the lines that we are requesting. And you are absolutely right there. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Perhaps at this point in time, uh, 
Could I ask uh, or request uh, the minister to say a few words? Surprised that there is so much that is happening around us at UCED and policymakers. Some of the information is what we need for us to be able to plan for the future. You know, a lot of challenges that are going to be able to and I can assure you that it is healed. But we are also to blame. This is a challenge. Proper land use. How are we using our land? We temper with the environment when it rains, like now, all that sand ends up in our rivers. And look at the floods that we have had within our midst. And yet, we do have human capital. People who have studied all these issues, and yet we are not benefiting to solve our problems. So, lack of publicity is one thing. Our where ADB is funded, not a Zimbabwe company to put up a water recycling program and also a water management system. They have not completed. For three years they did a short term job. When we could recruit this we boss of it's critical that sometimes share jokes with his excellence to say, yes, we invested in education, but is it helping us to solve our challenges in we have to be very honest. We tend to spend time on politics. That's the type of education I see in Zimbabwe, and yet we are lagging behind. When we go to South Africa, you can imagine how old people are driving development in that country. But in Zimbabwe, we spend time fighting each other. The sooner we realize that we need each other, and we have the capacity. In Zimbabwe. So I really think we need to interact more. We have these forums. I don't have to be coming here to support, but an invitation to say, can, can we discuss this openly and honestly? And I'm available because I've learned quite a lot. We are going to be importing other systems 
to ensure we educate, we advise the nation on disaster situation. And yet, you have developed a system already. We are going to invest millions of dollars. So we need to be the right more as is involved in that order. Pride that we will see you. Let's work together, together for the betterment of Zimbabwe. Even the farmers in the Motari, there is a program funded by is it Zim Fund, under the Zim Fund. Communities there are using the recycled water to grow vegetables and we buy Chibake from. But it's because we don't know stories not just in Zimbabwe and Mutari, but beyond Zimbabwe. So thank you so much, Professor, for coming. This has been an eye opener, even for the Minister of Water, Environment, and Climate. So, thank you. I think we need more of these uh, lectures uh, so that we realize that we, within ourselves, we do have the knowledge, we do have the capacity. Let us not look down upon ourselves. So, thank you for that information that you have shared with us. Or maybe we'll do something. I think. Yeah. Uh, Minister, thank you very, very much. Um, I'm not sure whether Dean Engineering, CEO, Zino, would like to say anything. Um, you'd like to say something? Just a few remarks. My name is Tony Lampa. I'm just the president of the minister. Thank you very much. Um, there is in the Mount Environment Management Act, uh, the National Environmental Council. And the National Environmental Council, members of the university do sit on that National Environmental Council, but it has not as yet been enabled. I've only ever had one meeting, and that was purely an introductory meeting. I think you should get up and get the National Environmental Council up and running. It might be a very good way to interact with the experts of the field. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you very much. Mine is uh, appreciation for everybody, uh, in particular the Vice Chancellor and his team in the university uh, to afford us this platform to make a presentation. And in fact, you are the first to hear what we're going to launch in two days. So I, I hope this uh, will be able to use the information that we've got. It is not every time you get ministers sit through a lecture. Very, very few. I've been to many countries. They come, they open, they go. She opens, she stays. And I think that's a big <laughs> And I can say that because she's passionate about it, that's where she stayed. And I'm sure she's passionate about it that she wants to be. We need to create that synergy. Uh, Zimbabwe has it all. Uh, we shouldn't be jobs. We should be creating the jobs. We have the information. Let's make this country a place of uh, a place of study, a place that some people will come and see a good work, and not only just give it out, but that make sure that we generate income from it. We make sure that we use it to develop the economy. There's so much in Zimbabwe. Uh, 
Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, she insisted on coming. She insisted on staying through. And uh, we really appreciate that. And my colleague, uh, uh, Professor William Brook, uh, it's not uh, many times that uh, you get uh, such people very experienced. He's an academic. He's now in policy making and he's brought to us the world, you know, to this room. The whole world takes. And I hope we'll take advantage of it. We don't always get people who have a global perspective, especially on water and on other things presented to us. Thank you. The uh, I thank you very much, uh, and all of you who are here, I know uh, you have precious time. People are going to pick up their children, but they stay. I'm sure the women are here. They, you know, looking at the clocks. Thank you very much for staying. The children will survive. Our life is water. Water. So we tell them life is water. We're here for water. And, and please educate them as well. Invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Minister, on behalf of UNESCO. We have the regional director of life city. Thank you for coming. Thank you. While he's coming up, uh, I will just quickly make two announcements. Um, the first one is that uh, I'm told that uh, there will be some refreshments uh, outside. And then the second one is that uh, uh, the restrooms, uh, sorry about this uh, belated announcement, the restrooms are behind the building. Uh, thank you, Director uh, I've been asked to do the board of things, but I think. I think that has been done in quite uh, as, uh, sufficient. I, I don't have to waste time. Um, just to, um, to say uh, thank you very much um, uh, to everybody. That's a clarification to go ahead. There is for some of I was asking what is this recycling they are talking about? Uh, what is reuse? And then um, I think um, just as a parting. Uh, who took a bath this morning? A bath. <laughs> and who took a shower? <laughs> More people took a bath than a uh, shower. Uh, basically, uh, if you took a bath, you, you were recycling, uh, you were reusing the water that uh, you <laughs> Yeah, you're dead. You were, you know, recycling it better. <laughs> <laughs> and um, after that, I hope you'll be very efficient shower because you need to clean your, your, your dead after. But if you took a shower, use the water, it went away, but you clean. I don't know what that, that means. Uh, tell me uh, your basic statement. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd like to thank you very much. I think uh, we'll proceed to the I'll not give you any further. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you can proceed through that door to the end of the session with a question. Um, can I please maybe ask uh, the students to just uh, hang on a bit? Yes, of all, I uh, ask the students. <laughs> Manager. <laughs> <laughs>